me that lots of people are a bit snobby about watching the cable channels, but they're well worth flicking through. I've noticed a lot of the shows have extreme in the title. <laughs> extreme couponing. <laughs> What's the extreme bit? Is the dad using a chainsaw to cut out the coupons <laughs> while a tiny child holds the magazine? <laughs> extreme furniture? That would just be me getting on a bar stool. <laughs> Trying to keep the conversation going while doing the hook noise. <laughs> I wish the dog whisperer was just a man leaning into a Yorkshire terrier going, your breath stinks. <laughs> then there's It's Me or the Dog, where people decide who did the turd on the kitchen floor. <laughs> it's me or the dog. Someone's been eating out the bin during the night. It's me or the dog. <laughs> yeah, it was me. <laughs> Tough. The economy is struggling, lots of people are short of money, but as ever, TV is there to help us out. Shows like Super Scrimpers are great. Here are some money saving tips that I've learnt. Don't buy the Super Scrimpers book, just get it out the library. <laughs> Don't buy Christmas presents for elderly relatives too early. <laughs> with vinegar, that way your kitchen smells of chips. <laughs> Use your dad's pants as dusters, but not while he's still wearing them. <laughs> if anything, it makes it more smeary. <laughs> Make your own hair removal wax by melting sugar with water and lemon juice. I did that and it all went wrong. <laughs> now I've got a caramel bikini line. <laughs> I seem to like it. <laughs> and so do the wasps. <laughs> Some of the money saving tips are bloody rubbish, though. Don't spend money on expensive gym memberships. That's it. <laughs> Just don't. <laughs> Save money on cotton wool. Use small pieces of cut up tights to remove nail varnish. But then you'll have to buy new tights. <laughs> Save money on tights by sticking cotton wool to your legs. <laughs> Don't buy deodorizers for your shoes. Put cat litter in them overnight. <laughs> but then your cat will have a shit in. <laughs> I mean, that smell of cheese is almost gone. <laughs> Save money on pets, make friends with a dog owner and walk their dog. Save money on a partner, have sex with your friend's husband. <laughs> now, we all need help understanding this stuff, and who better to give us that help than TV's money-saving expert, Martin Lewis? <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. Now, do you actually spend anything? Or are you just a tight ass? <laughs> I have spent a penny on occasion, if that counts. Uh... <laughs> Is any of the shampoo in your house not nicked from a hotel? <laughs> The thing is, what you do with that... <laughs> is you... That's a no, then. <laughs> Listen, it's an implied freebie when you're going to the hotel. There's nothing wrong with taking them. Stealing the towels and the dressing gown is difficult. It's different, but the shampoo oh, is no, there you for you to be used. you said it's difficult. You didn't say it was difficult. <laughs> 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 Take me away now. Are you... One of your tips is you say take a sponge into the shower because uh, it saves soap, doesn't it? Does it have to be a sponge or could a Swiss roll do the job? <laughs> well, I mean, it would be, it's not actually one of my tips, but I like it anyway. It'd be dual purpose. It'd be dual, you know, you'd, you'd enjoy it. Well, exactly. I mean, you'd make sure you had a bite first before you started doing it under your armpits. <laughs> <laughs> What's your thermostat set at at home? Um, four jumpers and a big blanket. <laughs> Do you wear jumpers in the house? Is what number is it on? Do you know what number it's on? 
It doesn't work. It's set as a temperature. It's a little bit accurate. I think it's if you want to actually ask a question, it's at 68 degrees Fahrenheit. But there we go. And it's turned off as soon as possible after the winter ends. I'd like to be anything more, but I've got a little baby and she's more important than saving money. Oh. Well, hasn't she got any jumpers? <laughs> <laughs> When you give your wife flowers, are they usually uh, wreaths that you found on the side of the road? No, but you <laughs> asked that. I was so proud the other week because there was this lovely bunch of flowers that had been reduced to 20p in the local supermarket. And normally, when you buy flowers, you obviously take the price off. But I was so proud of the bargain, I left it on just to show her. <laughs> and what did she say? She was delighted. She's tighter than I am. <laughs> Congratulations. I'm surprised you didn't have twins, though. Did they not have, like, a bog off on babies at the time? <laughs> <laughs> well, you did get a good return on your deposit, which is nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you give... Oh, no, I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> did you don't give do that. Whatever it was, don't do it. <laughs> did you give your wife an injection of liquidity? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I've got a great endowment. <laughs> tips is to buy cheap cola and flush it down the toilet. Is that to clean it or just because it's horrible? <laughs> no, it does. It does really good cleaning, actually, if you talk about thrift. Same with bicarbonate of soda and white vinegar are really good. But, I mean, there are... I have to admit, there are some things that I say which I admit even I don't do myself. If you're on a water meter, there's the old phrase, if it's yellow, let it mellow. If it's brown, flush it down. And I have to say, I draw the line just a little bit above that one. <laughs> I flush. I, 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 press, I press the little flush, not the big flush. You don't want to press the big flush when, if it's just a bit of yellow. Oh. You press the little flush, but you don't want to go the And with hole. my diet, sometimes I need to do the two and then a bucket of water. <laughs> <laughs> if you were Chancellor of the Exchequer, what would you do? Oh, I'd resign. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Martin Lewis. Uh, you. you have listened to his advice, but there must be an easier way of making money. There must be. Ah! Let's give a go at this. Pizza, pizza, pizza! Hooray! <laughs> at the bottom, so thank God that didn't happen. <laughs> Some BBC money, there you go, flower. It's more than Martin got paid, but <laughs> you deserve it now. Um, have you noticed there are so many history programmes on TV at the moment? Everything I've learned about history, I've got from Blackadder. <laughs> <laughs> I told Blackadder's writer Richard Curtis and he was both thrilled and appalled. <laughs> I take most history with a pinch of salt, especially the history of tequila. <laughs> we didn't do history at school. We did humanities, so we just coloured in Romans for four years. <laughs> so the only thing I know is that the Romans wore pink outfits. <laughs> we didn't do World War II at school, but I heard about it from my grander. I wasn't sure if I'd follow it, cos I hadn't seen World War I. <laughs> but I do know a few things. The Romantic Era was when Spandau Ballet were top of the hit parade. <laughs> the Great Depression lasted from 1929 to World War II, because that's when everyone cheered up. <laughs> oh, at least something's happening now. Stockings, chocolate and GI blowjobs. <laughs> I saw on the listings that a show called Secrets of World War II was on at 6.45am, and I thought, put it on at that time and they'll stay secret. <laughs> Of course, it's not just the history programmes that have ancient artefacts on. The other day on Top Gear, I saw some opinions from the 1970s. <laughs> <laughs> I love who 
do you think you are? Bloody love it. But every time it comes on, I'm disappointed the theme tune isn't swing it, shake it, move it, make it. <laughs> By series 25, it'll be called Who the Fuck Is That? <laughs> version of who do you think you are is called what do you think he did <laughs> I've actually been on who do you think you are they don't tell you where you're going beforehand and I had to have cold weather training my boyfriend said that'll just be for the bit when you go back to South Shields <laughs> when we were filming at my parents house the crew needed us to be quiet while they recorded the sound of the room the sound man said recording at Sarah's parents' house in the back room. At which point my dad leaned right into the microphone and said, dining room. <laughs> <laughs> I still feel a bit bad for not knowing much about history. So to explain it all to me, please welcome TV historian Dan Cruikshank. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Dan. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much for coming. Um, can we go back to ancient times? We can try. Thank you. Thank you. Um, before the Iron Age, was everything just really creased? <laughs> <laughs> very bent, very bent and wobbly, I'm sure. Yeah. Bent and wobbly. <laughs> what is oral history? Um, <laughs> I've heard that happens to most couples. <laughs> <laughs> Explain. <laughs> I'm going to explain that to you. I'm certainly not going to explain it to you, not now, anyway. <laughs> not now. We'll do that. Well, we'll not do it later on. Right? Well, Alex. <laughs> um, as part of your series, The Art of Dying, um, you asked the BBC obituary department if you could read your own obituary. Did <sighs> it have a date on it? <laughs> I didn't ask for that. <gasps> you know, you, you they know just what gave you it. Well, you know what television's like. Mm, I do. You do, exactly. It's just pretty ghastly. <laughs> and, um, and moments are made I'm to... having a lovely time, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from this evening. It wasn't my idea, but the producer decided to have my obituary written. It was disappointing. It was short. He told me. He told me Aww. I'd reached um, a reasonable average level. I don't know what it was, a page and a bit. I've written mine, so tell us what you think of this. Um, here lies Sarah Millican. She finally finished all the biscuits. <laughs> She's buried with her cats. They're not happy. <laughs> but at least they won't be hungry for a bit. <laughs> she bought a double plot, so can you let Philip Schofield know, please? <laughs> um, what historical figures would you have for dinner? Oh, um, now this means to entertain at yes. my, at I my don't dining mean table. Like no, you were deep. <laughs> <laughs> could mean that. All the fat ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All over for dinner. I live in Spitalfields in East London, and um, there's a notorious character there. Now dead, thank goodness, we suppose, Jack the Ripper. Now, oh. I, I suppose I would rather like to. Have him at my uh, this mysterious character at my dining table to question him. You'd want a few others as well, wouldn't you? Because that'd just be awkward if it was just you and him, wouldn't it? <laughs> he may not reveal his secrets. Because you, you had a, a thought that Jack the Ripper may have lived in your house. Is that correct? He had a sense of humour, wicked sense of humour. He wanted to torment and tease the police force. And my house is just a few doors down from the police station. And then I thought, well, really, you know, he'd probably lodge in the area, wouldn't he? And my house is a perfect, would have been a perfect place. It was a cheap lodging house at the time. Mm. So you've come to this in quite, a, a, quite an intelligent way. I just thought maybe we're still getting his post. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> Possible. Possible. <laughs> now, which other car parks have got kings in? <laughs> um, but that was a brilliant story, wasn't it? It was I, such I... a good story. I understand, you know, the fact that he was found in a car park because... I've lost my car in a car park, wandered round and gone. I think I'm going to die in here. <laughs> so I totally get it. I totally get it. Does it annoy you when people say, and the rest is history? Because you're like, come on, that's the bit that's great. Well, I mean, everything is history, isn't it? Everything is history. This is history now, my, thank goodness. Um, <laughs> I mean, you know, but... Uh... 
Oh, living history, shall we? Harsh. Um, yep. <laughs> But of course, all history is something that happened yesterday or even a few minutes ago. Things where you can reflect on and learn lessons from. So the bit where I nearly had to describe to you what oral sex was, that <laughs> is... That is now definitely history. But right. Well, I like that bit of history. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you've been such an interesting guest. Thank you ever so much for coming on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, Dan Cruikshank. <laughs> Sorted. <laughs> Let's get back to proper telly. <laughs> Those structured reality shows are as popular as ever, aren't they? There are three types of people who watch TOWIE, people who watch ironically, people who want to have that lifestyle, and people who've lost their remote control. <laughs> <laughs> if I wanted to find out inane nonsense about people I don't know or care about, I'd phone me, ma'am. <laughs> we gave the world the vajazzle. <coughs> Why call it that? Why not glunt or sequim? <laughs> In Tawi, you can always tell when your fella's having an affair because he comes back from a night out with a glittery mouth. <laughs> They say you can't polish a turd, but you can give it a big entrance. <laughs> but my favourite reality show is Made in Chelsea, as that's the one that's closest to my lifestyle. <laughs> a non-stop round of partying, modelling and fashion blogging. Sniff me leggings, can get another day out with them. <laughs> is the VIP host for a celebrity hangout. Talk about made-up job titles. <laughs> you might as well be a unicorn trainer. <laughs> Most of the women in Made in Chelsea are ladies who lunch. I don't see what's so impressive about that. I lunch, breakfast, brunch, dinner and tea. <laughs> don't take me on, ladies. <laughs> One of them is called Binky. She sounds like she's been named by a xylophone. <laughs> Along with her brother, Plinky Plunk. <laughs> They seem to just keep the nicknames they had at school. If I did that, I'd be called Norma No Mates. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to know more about the world of Made in Chelsea because I think I'd fit right in. So to tell me all about it, please welcome a former star of the show. It's Gabriella Ellis. <laughs> the show thanks very much for coming just how posh are you like do you make common boyfriends use the tradesman's entrance <laughs> <laughs> how posh I, we live in a we live in chelsea so we get branded as really posh but we're the same as everyone else i like to think um, <laughs> you had to make a difficult choice to leave i did didn't you yes. um was that because of the bedroom tax or <laughs> 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 was it, it must have been hard. Was it hard? It to, was to very difficult, actually. I um, didn't tell anyone. I didn't tell anyone that I was leaving. So the last scene that you see when I genuinely walk in the room and say I'm leaving, <gasps> everyone burst into tears. It was, it was two years of my life. It was a big, big part. Yeah. So That's difficult. nice as well that they burst into tears, rather than it if was. they just went, bye! <laughs> <laughs> You're a bit of a role model, aren't you? Because I think nowadays a lot of kids really want rich parents, don't they? <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> have you ever wanted to visit the North and see how the other half live? I mean, like Camden, for example? <laughs> I've been to Camden. You've yeah, been to Camden? I've been to Camden, have you yes. been, Is this the furthest north you've been? Where in Salford? Uh, I've been to Sunderland. Is wow. that further? Why? Yes. Because... <laughs> <laughs> Do the Chelsea girls go in for the Vajazzlin as well, like in Towie and the Lady Gardener? Okay. But is it like posher where you've got like somebody in, like you've got your own Lady Gardener? <laughs> <laughs> to look after, you know, to, to trim your box hedging and... I don't think... We're not, <laughs> we're, not, we're not really into our Vajazzles. I think we just, we like to just, you know, keep it clean. Keep it clean, Keep good. it clean. <laughs> yeah. I think I could fit in. I think you could. In that show, I really do. Um, I do need a little bit of help uh, with <laughs> this area. With the 
with the accent. Because at the moment, I do sound a lot like I could work in any call centre, don't I? <laughs> 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 Hello, you're through the orange. I understand you're thinking of leaving. See, there you go. <laughs> is a highly trained vocal coach. Please welcome Samantha Masanyu. Hello. 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 Thanks for coming on, Pet. My pleasure. Um, now, are you going to teach me how to talk all dead posh in that, like I am going Gabriella? to do my best. Yeah? Yes. OK, what are we going to do? How, oh. how the hell are we going to do that? First of all, <laughs> Um, I'd like you to stand up for me because all I right. think what we'll do first of all is a bit of centering and rooting work oh. <laughs> This is going to um, Help to give you confidence when you're doing the audition. Okay. I do. Um, I do feel confident when I've had a good rooting. I do um... <laughs> Perfect. So what I'd like you to do is yes. to stand with your feet hip width apart and place your hip hands width. on hip width <laughs> And place your hands on your belly for me. Oh, which belly? <laughs> I said the one that's just slightly over the top. <laughs> just around your belly button area. That belly button, great. that bit Perfect. there. Absolutely. So how this is going to go is that I'm going to give you a double bounce of sound and you're going to repeat it. Okay. And then I'll do another double bounce of sound and you're going to repeat it. And we're going to work on the lovely RP vowels when we do this, all right? Okay. So let's give it a Stop go. You. Hands on the belly, focus on that centre and ha ha. <laughs> give it a try. <laughs> Lovely. Hi, hi. Hi, hi. Ho, ho. Ho, ho. Oh, I feel like it's now. There you go. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. You're doing very well. Thanks. Next thing we're going to work on now is something that's called oral posture. Oh, that's um, down on my knees. <laughs> You just lean over a bit. <laughs> That's when we're looking at what the lips, teeth, tongue, and jaw are doing, and primarily we're going to be focusing teeth. on the jaw. Teeth. <laughs> John, almost certainly not supposed to use teeth. <laughs> just a little bit, like. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Looking at the jaw for this one. So with RP, what yes. we're after is a lovely released jaw. That means there'll be more space in the mouth. In the <laughs> Absolutely, so there's lots more room for those lovely RP vowels to bounce there's around. There's a room in there. <laughs> so, well, you're going to love this because I'd like you to place your hands together. Brilliant. I want you to adopt a dropped jaw position, which is... Oh. <laughs> Absolutely. And what I'd like you Shut to up. do... What I'd like you to do is we're going to shake our hands forward and backwards where you're going to do it. should stay beautifully still, the jaw should be lovely and released. And we're going to be doing it on an R sound, doing it on an R sound. So, you can watch me if you like first of all and then you can I'd like copy. to. All right, I'll go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ready? Yeah. And... Oh. Brilliant for loosening the jaw because I can see that yours, well, actually, it might not be that tight. Moving on. <laughs> so, um, the, next, the next thing that I really want us to look at is the vowel changes. Okay. We're going to be moving on to the major, major RP vowel sounds. So the first of all, the first one rather that I'd like you to consider is the O sound. <laughs> Found in the words like don't and no. Say that for me. Don't. Don't and no. That's how I say it. Don't and no. Good. So give me the O sound. O. Oh. Much better. <laughs> and, and incorporate that now into the word. O. Oh. Don't. Don't. No. No. Much better word. Don't. don't no. And last but not 
least, the other really important vowel is the long vowel sound R moving from its short position, um, potentially with your accent. So if you were saying the words like laugh and bath and grass, they would be lengthened with the long R sound to bath, laugh, grass. Go and give it a go for me. Laugh. Good. <laughs> bath. Lovely. Grass. Very good. <laughs> I really do. Um, I just need to accessorise. Bear with us a second. Why don't you try and say this and have a conversation with Gabriella? Oh, God. OK. <laughs> OK. Let's do this. Um, oh, God. So anyway, like, I'm having drinkies with Binky and Cheska when who should so turn up but Millie? And like, she's so up in my grill. <laughs> and she's like, way, and I'm like, no way. <laughs> so I totally throw my glass of pop in her face. <laughs> Only Carver, totally worth it. <laughs> Anyway, j'adore Chelsea, don't you think, Gabs? I didn't know what you were talking about, Pet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for coming on the show, ladies and gentlemen, Gabriella Ellis and Samantha Bassanio. <laughs> That's it for tonight. <laughs> Unfortunately, we didn't have time to talk about the BBC's economics editor, Stephanie Flanders, whose radio show is called Stephanomics. <laughs> it's a shame she doesn't do it on the telly. She could show statistics on a Steffi graph. <laughs> Business news, which is what we call it at home, when the cat's like totally shat where he shouldn't. <laughs> And we didn't have time to talk about the rest of history. Apparently, there's, like, fucking loads of it. <laughs> Ciao. Joining Jules on Lace and X, Arctic Monkeys, and the legend that is Paul McCartney in the studio. Sweaty goings on over on BBC Three with Nick Grimshaw in this week's panel. Preparing to sweat the small stuff 